Hi! Our lesson is about addition of similar fractions. In order to add similar fractions, we have to follow three steps. Number one, add the numerators. Number two, write the sum over common denominator. Number three, write answer in lowest term. These are the three steps that we are going to follow as we add similar fractions. But before that, I have a question. How do we know that the fractions are similar fractions? You see, fractions have what we call numerators and denominators. Numerators are the numbers written above. So, in these examples, 3 8, 5 8, 1 8, and 7 8, the numerators are 3, 5, 1, and 7 because they are the numbers above. They are called numerators, while the denominators are the numbers below. So, in these examples, the denominators are 8. 8, 8, and 8. Do you notice anything? Correct. The denominators are all the same. So if the case is like this, where the denominators are the same, they are called similar fractions. They are similar fractions because their denominators are the same or similar. They are the opposite of dissimilar fractions. So, let us focus on similar fractions. Again, similar fractions are fractions having the same or similar denominators. Another thing that you have to know before we proceed to addition of similar fractions is how to reduce fractions into their lowest terms. I have here examples and the question is how do we reduce the following fractions into their lowest terms? In order to reduce fractions to lowest terms, you have to find out the number that you can use to divide the numerator and the denominator. Let us take 2 fourth as an example. So I have written 2 and I have written 3. In order to get the number that you are going to use to divide them, you are going to look for what we call GCF. What is a GCF? GCF is what we call greatest common factor. G stands for greatest, C stands for common, and F stands for factor. Since we are talking of factor, we are going to get the factors of the numerator and the denominator that we are going to reduce to lowest term. So, what are the factors of 2 here? The factors of 2 are 2 and 1. Because when you multiply 2 and 1, the answer is 2. How about the factors of 4. What are the numbers that we can multiply to get 4? Of course, we have 4 and 1. We can also have 2 and 2. Isn't it? Well, let me put a multiplication sign here so it will be easy for you to understand. So, 4, the factors of 4 is... 4 times 1 as well as 2 times 2. Now, look at the factors of 2 and 4 or 2, 4. 
is there a factor that is common among the given? Yes. So that is what? That is 2. I have here 2 and I have here another 2. So that means we can use 2 as the greatest common factor of 2 fourth. So we can divide Two and four by two. So two divided by two equals one. And four divided by two equals two. So that's it. The lowest term of two fourth is one half. How did we get one half? We use two as its greatest common factor. Now, how about 12 15? What are the factors of or what are the factors of 12 and 15? So let us have 12. That is 12 times 1. Another is, yes, that's correct, 6 times 2. Another is 3 times 4. So those are the factors of 12. How about 15? The factors of 15 are 15 times 1 as well as 5 times 3. Now, do you notice a number that is common or a factor that is common among the given factors? Yes. What number is that? That is 3. So, if we are going to if we are going to reduce 12 15 using Three, what will be the answer? 12 divided by 3 is 4. And 15 divided by 3 is 5. So we now have the lowest term of 12 15, and that is 4 fifths. How about the next, which is 12 ninth? If you notice, 12 9 is not the same as 12 15 in terms of its type as fraction. Why? If you notice, 12 15 and 2 fourth are what we call proper fractions. They are proper fractions because their numerators are smaller compared to the denominators. In the case of 12 ninths, it's called improper fraction. Why improper? Because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So what are we going to do if the case is like this? How are we going to reduce it to its lowest term? We are not going to use greatest common factor or GCF, but instead, we are going to divide the numerator by the denominator. So in this case, the numerator is 12 and the denominator is 9. So remember, if the fraction to be reduced is an improper fraction, you have to divide numerator by the denominator that is the case so we are going to divide 12 by 9 and what will be the answer if we divide 12 by 9 how many 9 is there in 12 yes you're correct the answer is 1 and the answer in this type of reducing fraction when the 
numerator is bigger than the denominator, the answer is called a whole number. 1 is now a whole number. And then, is it the final answer? No, because there is still a, de a remainder if you divide 12 by 9 with an answer of 1. What will be the remainder? Yes, the remainder is 3. And 3 will now become our new numerator. And the denominator is still the given denominator, which is 9. So our answer now is 1 and 3 ninths. But look, look at 3 ninths. Is it the final answer? Yes, not yet. Why? Because we can still reduce 3 ninths using greatest common factor. And what is the greatest common factor of 3 and 9? Let's find out. The factors of 3 are 3 times 1. While the factors of 9 are 9 times 1 and 3 times 3. So, what is common among the factors? Yes, the common factor or the greatest common factor is 3. So, we will divide 3 9 by 3. And the answer will be 3 divided by 3 equals 1, while 9 divided by 3 equals 3. Now, don't forget the whole number. You have to write the whole number together with the fraction. So, the lowest term of 1 and 3 ninths is finally 1 and 1 third. So that is how to get the lowest term. What's the first way to get the lowest term? That is to get what we call GCF or greatest common factor. And another is by dividing the numerator by the denominator. Why am I telling you that? Because we are going to use your knowledge of reducing fractions to lowest term when we add similar fractions. Now that you know how to reduce fractions to lowest term, we can now add similar fractions. And this is very easy. Okay? We will just follow the steps, which is to add the numerators, to write the sum over common denominator, and to write answer in lowest term. So let us apply the rules. It says here, 1 tenths plus 2 tenths plus 3 tenths. So, we are going to get the answer. It says, all you need to do is to add the numerators. Remember, when fractions are similar fractions like this, you will just add the numerators. So, 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. So, you will write 6. And then, you will just copy the common denominator, which is 10. And then, since 610 is not yet in its lowest term, we are going to reduce it to its lowest term. Using what? Is it greatest common factor or numerator divided by denominator? Yes, you're correct. We are going to use greatest common factor because the answer is a proper fraction. So, let's find out the factors of 6. 
what are the factors of 6? 6 times 1 and 3 times 2. How about the factors of 10? The factors of 10 are 10 times 1 and 5 times 2. Can you see a common factor or the greatest common factor among the given factors? Yes, that is 2. So we are going to divide 6 tenths by 2. 6 divided by 2 equals 3. While 10 divided by 2 equals 5. Is it now the final answer? Yes. 3 fifth is the final answer when you add 1 tenths plus 2 tenths plus 3 tenths. And in mathematics, in order to show your final answer, you have to put it in a circle. So, put it in a circle like this. And... That's it. Final answer is 3 fifths. Okay? So, let's have another example. Let's have 3 8 plus 2 8 plus 4 8. So, once again, let us apply the rules. It says there to just add the numerators because these are similar fractions. So, let us have 3 plus 2 is 5 plus 4 is 9 and the denominator is 8. So, is it the final answer? Yes, not yet. And how are we going to reduce it? Is it by using the greatest common factor? or by dividing the numerator by the denominator. You're correct. We are going to divide the numerator by the denominator because this is an improper fraction. So we are going to divide 9 by 8. And what is the answer? 9 divided by 8 equals, yes, you're correct, 1. And what will be the remainder? The remainder is 1 also. And the denominator is still 8. So we now have 1 and 1 8 as our answer. So you can write here the word OR to show that 1 and 1 8 is the final answer and as I've said you have to put a circle on your answer to show that it is the final answer that's it your final answer for 3 8 plus 2 8 plus 4 8 equals 1 and 1, 8. So that's how to add similar fractions. You just have to follow the steps which are add the numerators, write the sum over common denominator, and write answer in lowest term. I'm sure you can now proceed to the activities and learning tasks in the module and the activity sheets. Good luck!